Today, I stumbled across one of Cinemassacre's videos, which was his top comedy movies of all time. And I know this isn't normal for my channel, and I'm gonna do this a little bit more laid back, a little more relaxed. But when I saw that video, I was like, man, I would love to do this because Comedy movies are huge for me. I, I love movies as many of us do, but if I could pick one genre that kind of stuck with me as a kid that really transferred into my adult life, kind of plays into my character of who I am today, being a goofy guy, a loud guy, not taking things too serious in life, uh, it would be comedy. So I thought it'd be cool, again, just like James, not necessarily saying my top 10 absolute comedy movies of all time, which these all probably would land in there, so I guess you could call it that. But today we're gonna look at some of my favorite comedy movies of all time and just talk casually about them. The first movie is probably the movie I watch the most when it comes to comedies, not necessarily saying it's my favorite, but whenever I get a night to just relax, my wife always comes in and she's like, really, are you watching Benchwarmers again? Uh, this movie stars Rob Schneider, David Spade, John Heater, Nick Schwartzen, John Lovitz, the list goes on and on of awesome comedic characters and this is kind of one of those ragtag teams where when they all got together it wasn't necessarily a cast that I thought I would find particularly funny together even though some of them obviously worked together in the past but John Heater in that mix with a lot of these guys honestly makes me laugh so hard yes he plays kind of like the Napoleon Dynamite type character where he's dumber than dirt and very duh David Spade in this movie too Pro I would say yes my favorite David Spade performance apart from maybe Emperor's New Groove absolutely love it I love see seeing Rob Schneider too kind of play a cool guy because I know a lot of Adam Sandler movies so he's not necessarily the cool guy but in this movie, he pulls it off well. The movie makes me laugh. It's one of those baseball movies where, you know, the kids all, they, they train to play, all suck. They all kind of suck together. John Heater's on the team. A lot of different ragtag duos of weirdos and losers who end up becoming good. And, you know, the whole celebration thing happens. But this movie makes me laugh more than any movie really should. And it's not like I bust out, well, I, I'm gonna lie. I do bust out laughing a lot in this movie. Best one in the movie? Maybe even Nick Schwartzen being scared of the sun. What's steroids? Something that makes your peepee -pee smaller. There must be steroids in macaroni. I'm gonna get this one out of the way because I feel like it's in everybody's list and that's Dumb and Dumber. To me, Jim Carrey, I could put a lot of his movies on here, almost all of them, the Ace Venturas, any other really type of comedy that Jim Carrey's done, as well as his other performances as well in drama movies. But speaking of Jim Carrey, I would say he was my idol as a kid as far as the way I wanted to live my life and be goofy. I was always very slapstick in high school, very over the top physical comedy in high school. That's how I always worked. So Dumb and Dumber, uh, Jeff Daniels, amazing in the movie as well. They did it, I think, in a way where the whole being dumb and duh and stupid was not overdone because yeah, we saw movies like Benchwarmers and movies going forward. I feel like when they did it at their time, it was prime Jim Carrey. Jeff Daniels was out of the blue. Nobody knew he could do something like this. Was beyond hilarious in it. And them two together, I think it was darn right perfection for a comedy. Top two, probably, comedies of all time for me. Absolutely fantastic. I have to even say that I even did like the sequel. The official sequel, not the sequel with the other two guys. Even though I didn't hate it. I, I, liked, I like them all. But Dumb and Dumber 1 is outstanding. I like you a lot. <laughs> okay, now I'm, now, now I'm actually thinking what movie I might have actually literally laughed the most out loud ever at one time through an entire movie and that has to be Kung Pao. I remember watching this with Ricky at a friend's house. We had a, a group of high schoolers over, high school girls over. We were in high school. Everyone was in the jacuzzi having fun. Ricky and I, all the guys and the girls were in the jacuzzi doing their thing, being cool. And Ricky and I were in the house and we started to watch this little movie called Kung Pao. And we were, we were like, okay, we'll be out there in a little bit to hang out. We were literally crying, laughing at this movie. I'm talking crying, holding my stomach, my stomach hurt. I remember watching it kind of hanging out over the back of a couch, falling over the couch, just laughing. I mean, I'm talking, when you picture in a movie and you, if you're an actor and they say, okay, laugh stupid, laugh overly laugh, slap your knee, yell, turn red. That was us, but there was no acting. This movie is an overdubbed old karate kung fu movie where they overdubbed it and did some new scenes as well. Not a big fan of some of the CGI stuff in the movie, but the comedy in this movie, Steve Oderick, or Oderick, the actor's name, I can't remember how you exactly pronounce his name. The best laughs I've had, probably, and I, I would say the most 
outlandish, gut-wrenching laughs I've ever had in my life right there in that movie. Kung Pao, absolutely hilarious. To this day, for me, it holds up. I don't know if it would for you. For me, it absolutely does. Hey, who's he? I don't know. Billy Madison was a movie I first saw at a friend's house when I was a kid and I absolutely fell in love with Adam Sandler right then and there. Now it's funny because I know Adam Sandler had a good list of movies that people loved, you know, like Happy Gilmore as well, during his younger days. And then as he got older, he went through a phase of like Zohan and Little Nicky where his movies were just kind of whatever. But again, recently I have completely fallen in love with Adam Sandler's movies. I love that Western one he made not too long ago. Literally can't remember the name, like The Hateful Eight or Youthful Six or something. I can't remember. Absolutely love that movie. I love the, the Halloween Herbie, whatever that he made recently. Adam Sandler's comedies, for some reason, the humor in it, because maybe it played into my life as a youth during the days of Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore, when he brings that comedy back and that style, whether it's, whether it's the same old Adam Sandler we've heard a hundred times, the same old Adam Sandler type of jokes we've heard a hundred times, I love it. There's something nostalgic about it for me that is still funny though in a fresh way. Even, I don't know if it's because I'm a dad or what, but I love the Grown Ups movies. Kevin James and that team that they have going on that they've kind of built to work with together, you know, Rob Schneider as well. Hilarious movies. Adam Sandler will always stick in my brain as one of the, the legends in comedy for me. I'd say him and Jim Carrey are right up there among, I'd say probably a, a huge part of my laughs as a kid and even now. Okay. Yeah. If I have to pick a movie that I quote the most, I would say there's probably two. Uh, both of them are comedies, but I'll tell you about one of them right now, and that's Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Paul Rubin's type of humor as Pee Wee Herman was everything I wanted to see as a kid. Yeah, he had Pee Wee's Playhouse, which I didn't love, but I liked. But Pee Wee's Big Adventure, man, I mean, the movie, I've said this before, but the way it started out, when you were a kid, and you see Pee Wee get out of bed and he is just automatically a goofball. I mean, this, this guy isn't aged. Aged isn't a thing. He's a little kid goofing around, walking with his slippers, smelling the, the carrots, la 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 la, la 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 la. <sighs> and then he gets out of bed and then he goes down the slide and then he goes into this giant wonderland with his dog, Speck, just him and his house brushing his teeth. Weird little gags too in the movie that I didn't, they didn't really do anything for me as a kid, but now I'm like, that's unique, that's cool. Like when Pee Wee looks out the window and then he walks away and then the goldfish go by and you realize that's actually a fish tank outside of the window. From the way he waters his lawn, and you have to think as an adult when he turns on, you know, to water his lawn and the octopus guy, his arms are flying everywhere. I as an adult now imagine what it would be like to do that knowing the neighbors are watching and just probably looking at this guy, like look at him living and enjoying life. We need more of that right now, by the way. I, I just love it, it's so pure to me, even though yes, I know Paul Rubens doesn't have a a perfectly pure history, but that's okay. Pee-wee's Big Adventure, so many quotes in that movie. I love even some of the animations in the movie. I love the animations on Large Marge's face. Um, I love the animations in Pee-wee's Nightmares. The cast of characters are just awesome as well. Francis does an amazing job as well. Andy does an amazing job as well. A dotty Chuck, Pee-wee, all of them. Just a fantastic, funny movie on all levels. If you've never seen it, I actually highly recommend it. Favorite scene right now would probably be when Pee Wee and the homeless guy are singing Jimmy Crack Corn and I Don't Care, and the homeless guy outdoes Pee Wee, tires out Pee Wee, and Pee Wee says screw it and just dives off the train. Always made me laugh. Jimmy Crack Corn and I Don't Care! All right, since we were just talking about which movies I quote the most, I might as well go with my second most quoted movie, and that's The Three Amigos. Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, Martin Short. I saw this movie, I think, at the point where I already discovered Jim Carrey previously, and it wasn't necessarily my type of humor, or I didn't think it would be my type of humor. This was more like a movie my dad recommended to me. Like, you gotta try out this movie, you gotta see it. And you know, for me, Jim Carrey was what was funny at the time, that type of comedy. And although there is a lot of slapstick in Three Amigos, it wasn't as slapstick, but I am telling you the jokes and the writing just landed joke after joke after joke after joke. Just even from some of the, the way the movie was shot with the, the part where Steve Martin's up on the balcony walking across and wah, wah, 
Look up here, look up here, look up here. Some of my favorite jokes in the movie absolutely come from the bar scenes where they're in the bars and the culture is so different in there from what they are, these Hollywood, Hollywood white boys basically <laughs> dressed like overly sensationalized mariachi guys going into this bar and just some of the lines they say would definitely not fly nowadays, but nonetheless, they absolutely would crack me up like when they first walk in and say, hi, we're not Mexicans. Or when they go to order their food, he's like, hi, do you have anything else besides Mexican food? Those lines, even now as an adult, I cannot help but bust up at these. They just, they land all their jokes in the deliveries. Uh, excuse us, we're not Mexicans. We're from out of town. It's not just the way these jokes are written throughout the movie, but the way they are delivered with these guys' faces. And I've said it before, and even not talking about the comedy side, but their their song, Arizona Moon Keep Shining, one of my favorite songs of all time, and I sing that to my kids all the time. Even such a beautiful scene like that, they make it funny at the end with Goodnight Ned. I absolutely adore this movie, and I always will. Before I go on to give you guys one more in my final mention, I'm gonna give a little honorable mention, and that's gonna be Gene Wilder, whoops, specifically the movie Young Frankenstein. Again, this is a movie that my dad recommended to me that I did not think I was gonna get, did not think I was gonna enjoy, but man, this movie just has so much comedy in it that I didn't expect myself to like, not only because I didn't think it'd be my humor, but because it was black and white. And for me as a kid, I was like, okay, dad, I can go back to Three Amigos and take it back a notch, but you're telling me to find a comedy movie that's funny, that's in black and white? And after watching Young Frankenstein, I def definitely discovered much more even that predate that movie. But when I discovered Gene Wilder and you know things like Willy Wonka as well, Blazing Saddles, that guy's comedy, his demeanor, his delivery, his approach, his look, the way, the way his mouth moves and his mannerisms when he gets crazy and goes wild, nails it every time. Gene Wilder, absolutely brilliant in the comedy world and other worlds as well. The last movie I'm picking, again, this isn't necessarily an order from one to 10, but it's just the last one I'm picking. And I debated calling this a comedy movie, even though it is, but for me, it's more heartwarming, but that's Home Alone. When I saw it behind me and you know, I was making this list, a family comedy without the family, comedy. For me, I kind of wanted to place it in heartwarming and maybe even kind of a little bit of a drama, but I do know that it's a comedy at heart. And there, I would say when I was a kid, I more related it to being a comedy movie. I felt myself laughing all the time, which I still do watching it, but I feel like it was definitely a comedy when I was a kid. And now watching, I'm like, oh, this is more of a heartstring movie for me, you know, as a dad and some of the scenes with the, the salt shoveler and the way he wants to interact with his family that he hasn't been talking to. When Kevin waves out the window with the snow falling where he's hugging his family, those scenes to me are what stick out more. But even as a comedy, I have to lock it in there because in my childhood, that was hardcore a comedy for me, hardcore a comedy, and it played a big part in my life and the way I feel about Christmas. I'm obsessed with Christmas. I cry in pretty much every Christmas movie and every Christmas movie made, and I feel like it has a lot to do with this. And Kevin McAllister, I mean, he, he, to me, cooler than Dennis the Menace and all those kids. He was the defining cool kid for me when it when it came to that type of stuff. When that came to that kind of comedy and being cool and being funny even though he wasn't intentionally being funny in the movie. For us, it was funny. Home alone. Are you here all alone? I'm eight years old. You think I'd be here alone? I don't think so. Ooh, Monty Python is also another good one, probably up there for me, and the Holy Grail. But, but with that said, let me know some of your favorite comedy movies down below in the comments because this is such a weird thing, comedy, there's dry humor and slapstick humor and slapping knee, I don't know what it's called really. There's all different types of humor, but certain things can tickle your fancy more than others and some might find certain humor funny and might, some might find it completely stupid. So let me know down below what your favorites are because I'm sure we're all gonna have a ton of different ones. There's so many other good ones that I just wanna start mentioning, but I'm not, because then it, it, won't, it won't be like my top, it'll be like my, my trickle down picks. So let me know yours down below. Hope you enjoyed this a uh, little more laid back, less hardcore edited video. That's all I got. <laughs> Bye -bye.